i. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice rational equation with complex numbers. Complex numbers are fun, solving equations with complex numbers are more fun. All right, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I talk about the basics of complex numbers in those videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know right down in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure someone will be able to answer those. Anyway, so we have this equation, z squared plus 16 all over z minus 4i. By the way, if you hear any meowing, those are my cats. They like to get into my room, the office, anyways. So this expression is equal to 3i, sorry about the distraction. z squared plus 16 divided by z minus 4i is equal to 3i. And we're going to be solving for z values. And I'll be presenting two methods. By the way, if you like algebra, anything besides complex numbers, in addition to complex numbers, you can also check out my other channel, which is called CyberMath. But cyber with an S, not with a C. Am I from Siberia? That's a good question. I'm not. Okay, anyways, so how do we solve a problem like this? There are two ways, like I said earlier. Let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'll do the brute force approach, which is do whatever you can to get the answer and don't do anything elegant. That's usually my first method. I don't recommend, but I will still talk about it because some people may use it and that's perfectly fine. A longer method isn't always the worst. A short method isn't always the best. Whatever you like, that's your favorite, right? And you're going to let me know, hopefully, which one you like better. Or if you know of a third method, please let us know. I'm curious to know. All right, so first method, cross multiplication, because why not? z squared plus 16 is equal to, by the way, that's how I make my z, so I can distinguish between z's and 2's because my 2's kind of look like z's sometimes. We're going to go ahead and distribute here, distribute like multiply these two things. z squared plus 16 equals z times 3i, I can write as 3iz minus 4 times 3, 12 i squared. Remember, if you forget everything about complex numbers, one thing you should always remember, i squared is equal to negative 1. So i is defined as the imaginary unit, which is also known as the square root of negative 1. Uh, complex numbers have two square roots, but if you're talking about the square root with the square root symbol, that means the principal square root to agree with real numbers, you know, people had to come up with a single uh, square root, which is called the principal square root. In this case, that happens to be i, okay? So, where do we go from here? We can turn this into a quadratic. Actually, it's already quadratic. We don't need to turn it, right? So, let's put everything on the same side. Put this in standard form, because polynomials like to be in standard form, right? Did you know that? Now, we're going to apply the quadratic formula. Yay, let's do it z equals negative b, b, remember b is the coefficient of z, which is negative 3i, so the opposite of that, plus minus the square root of b squared. You're going to square negative 3i, you can also square 3i, by the way, it doesn't matter, b squared and negative b quantity squared are the same, because even if they are complex numbers, they are still the same. That's why a complex number has two square roots, but that's another story. Anyways, what's b squared? 9i squared, that's negative 9 minus 4 times a times c. Hmm. a is 1, c is 16, 4 times 16 is 64, but that's a negative, right? Okay. b squared minus 4ac. Okay, I think I'm on the right path. And all of that is divided by 2a, which is 2. Alrighty? Cool. Now, oh, we forgot something. I just realized this didn't work nice because I wasn't expecting to get negative 73. Come on, I don't like that number. I mean, it's prime, but it's okay. Anyways, I forgot to distribute these. You probably realize, and I know a lot of people are writing comments about it right now, but don't worry, I'll fix it. That's negative 12 i squared, that's a plus 12. There we go. That's gonna bring a minus 12, that's gonna be a four, yay. This will be a four. And of course, that'll change things. Let's fix this. Now we have, 
d equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 9, minus 4ac, that's a minus 16. There you go. This is the number I was looking for. A perfect square in the negative sense, right? An imaginary perfect square. How about that? So this will be the square root of negative 25, which is 5i is a principle, but the will plus minus sign, it'll be plus minus 5i divided by 2. And from here, you get two solutions. And of course, that makes sense, right? A quadratic equation has two complex roots. The Is that called the fundamental theorem of algebra? Something like that. Anyways, if you add them up and divide by 2, you get 4i. And if you subtract and divide by 2, you get negative i. Awesome. So we have two solutions. Case closed. We can go home, right? No. Because we still have to do the second method, right? Wait a minute. I, weren't you waiting for the second method? I think so, right? Because that's going to be much more elegant, right? I promise that. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have z squared plus 16 divided by z minus 4i equals 3i, right? That was the right-hand side, I think. Let me double check, okay, in case I mess it up. Now, what are we going to do? What could be different, right? We could do it differently. Well, well, if you look at this carefully, you're going to realize, hopefully, that the top is a sum of two squares. So what? Sum of two squares cannot be factored. False. It can be in the complex world. Remember, when you multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, you get a squared minus b squared i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so this gives you a squared plus b squared, right? Exactly. So sum of two squares can be factored. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead and use it. How? z squared plus 16 can be written as z plus 4i times z minus 4i. Isn't that awesome? That divided by z minus 4i will do the trick almost, right? Now, notice that z minus 4i is a common factor, kind of like a whole, right? <laughs> if you were doing rational functions, you probably know this is a whole. But if z minus 4i is 0, we're going to run into a problem. So it shouldn't be 0, so z should not equal 4i. Uh-oh, that reminded me something. Well, let's go ahead and cancel it out. We get z plus 4i equals 3i. Uh-oh, this is linear and easy to solve. z equals negative i. Wait a minute. Weren't you supposed to get two solutions? Because we did get two solutions with the first method. Hmm, let's go ahead and check it out. We got negative i and 4i. But 4i does not work because it makes it undefined. Is it called undefined? 0 over 0? Some people call it indeterminate and some people don't like that. But anyways, are you one of those people? This brings us to the end of this video because we got the answer. There's only one solution and this really brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to watch. CyberMath and bye bye.